You know, when when Devo finally signed with Warner Brothers Records and we then embarked on a real tour for the first time. And these clubs we were playing in and these places we were playing in, especially in Europe, were pretty dingy given when they were built and what promoters could get away with. Uh, there weren't exactly many amenities around. Yeah, yeah. We also found that we all experienced some form, I guess, of, of stage fright. At that point, we were pretty good at playing live and pretty experienced, but something about the heat being on with an album out, the English and European press kind of like getting snarky, and you'd start to feel the, the pressure that this was real now. You know, you're in the middle of a career. You can fail. And oftentimes before a show, like out of nowhere, right? You think you're feeling great. It's been hours since you've eaten because nobody had any food for you anyway. And except out of, you know, some kind of like, commissary and suddenly you gotta go to the bathroom like just before it's time to play all i remember is that once we got in those yellow suits with the um elastic cinch belts and the boxing shorts underneath you weren't really ready to quickly drop trow and go to the bathroom. You were in a, in a kind of a, a bondage situation. And um, I think it was Mark that said, whoever shits their pants gets $100. So that became a running joke. Like who was gonna be the first to get $100 for just not being able to control it and just letting it go while you're playing and basically having like a plastic adult diaper on with this Devo yellow suit. And nobody ever did. Every, everybody said they came close and there were lots of jokes and ha-has. But $100 was a lot of money in 1978. So this particular night, I really had to go. And I felt it, and like I, there was no way, there was no way that if I went out on stage, it wasn't gonna happen to me. So I started running up the spiral stairway in this decrepit backstage area, back to a level that we had been put on by the promoter previous to the show, where we had unboxed our new Doc Martens that we had bought in King's Road and didn't see any bathroom anywhere. And I was screaming around, anybody know where a bathroom is? Anybody know where a bathroom is? And stagehands would tell bands, not just Devo, false directions, because that was their idea of, of having a big laugh on these creepy young new wave musicians who they hated. They even had mismarked tape arrows when you went under the stage to be sure that you would go the wrong way and end up in a dead end. And I just reach inside my yellow suit down inside my uh, elastic cinch belt, unleash the cinch belt a little, pull up my boxer shorts, and just let it go. And luckily it was a perfectly formed, firm, solid. And it just, I felt the warm mass coming and I stood up 
and straightened my right leg and shook it down my leg because the pant leg in the yellow suits was luckily fairly wide and shook it into the shoe box of the Doc Martin box and then started running down the spiral stairway and got to the stage just in time to get my guitar on. In the heat of the performance and all, all the you know, excitement after and, and we had a good show and people were clapping and screaming, and I had forgotten about exactly how that had gone down before the show. And one of our roadies started putting the Doc Martens back in the shoe boxes. And he screams, what the fuck? Of course, then the other band members and crew members, they burst out laughing, of course, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm being uh, humiliated and mocked. And I go, well, do I get my $100? And, and Mark says, well, no, you didn't do it on stage. So I didn't even get a hundred bucks. There is that feeling, you know, where the moment it's all over, where you get past the dread, you get past trying to control your involuntary body, bodily functions and the social unacceptability about what's to happen, and you release and it's, uh, some kind of wonderful, you know, it's, it's close to an orgasm. I mean, you talk about relief. <laughs> I played well that night. And the urgency to have to go just before a show kind of went away after that tour.